This is problem number two of the tariff, um, parts A through E. Okay. So for part A, they give us a demand and cost function, and they tell us the demand function is lowercase p of x equals 90 minus x over 100, and the cost function is 3x squared over 100 plus 10x plus 100. Okay, so this is demand, and this is cost. Okay, so they want us to find the profit function. So we think of profit, remember that profit is equal to revenue minus cost. So we have a cost function, we just need a revenue function. Our revenue function is going to equal our demand function times by x. Okay, so we take p of x and we multiply it by x. So we have 90 minus x over 100, whole thing multiplied by x. So we get 90x minus x squared over 100. So that would be our revenue function. So this equals our so we have profit equals this function, 90x minus x squared over 100, minus our cost function, which was 3x squared over 100, plus 10x plus 100. Okay, so now we just combine like terms, so p would be negative 4x squared over 100, so that gets rid of these. And then 90x minus 10x is 80x, so that gets rid of those, and then minus 100, and that's equal to negative x squared over 25, just simplifying, 4 goes into 125 times, plus 80x plus minus 100. So that is our profit function. So they, for part A, they gave us a demand function, and they gave us a cost, and they wanted us to find profit, and we know that profit equals revenue minus cost, so we need to find a revenue function. Our revenue function will be our demand function multiplied by x, so I multiply every term in my demand function by x, and I get 90x minus x squared over 100, which is now my revenue function. So I take that function and I subtract it from my cost function. I can only combine like terms, so the x squares and the x squares, and then the x and the x, and minus 100, so that is my profit function. So now for part B, they say find the marginal profit when 750 items are sold and interpret your results. So the marginal profit or marginal cost or marginal revenue will be the derivative. Okay, so when you see the word marginal, you can think derivative. So my regular profit function, which is a capital P, not demand, is negative x squared over 25 plus 80x minus 100. Okay, so marginal will equal P prime of x, the derivative, in that we use power rules, so negative 2x over 25 plus 80. And they want to know what is the marginal profit when 750 items, so that's when x equals 750, we plug it in to here, so we have negative 2 times 750 over 25 plus 80. 25 goes into 750 30 times, that's negative 60 plus 80, which is 20. And then they want us to interpret our results, so this is going to be equal to $20 per item. So for part B, they said to find the marginal profit when 750 are sold. So when we find marginal, we take our profit function that we had, and we just find the derivative of that, use power rule, bring down your 2, and then subtract 1. And we have our, now we have our marginal profit function. So they say when x is 750, we plug it in and we get 20, but then they want us to interpret our results. So profit would be how much money you make per item that you sell. 
So that's why it's $20 per item, and that's part B. And I will do C here. So for part C, they want us to suppose the management decides to increase the production by 15 units per week. When the production level is 750, find the rate at which profit will change with respect to time. So we need to find DP DT. Okay? And what we found over here, this marginal profit was DP DX. Okay? So they tell us that <clears throat> they're going to increase production by 15 units per week. So we have 15 units per week which is equal to dx dt, okay? So dx dt equals 15, where x is our units and t represents our time per week. So we have dp dt is going to be equal to dx dt times by dp dx. Because what happens is our dx terms cancel and we're left with dp dt. And now we said dp dx was $20 at $750, so dp dx is equal to $20. Because when they want to know when $750 are sold. So we have dp dt equals 15 times 20, which is 300 and then if we interpret those results, where it says include units, is money per week. Okay? So to review, when we found marginal profit, we found DPDX because it was the profit per item, and item represents X. <clears throat> and they gave us 15 units per week, and that's going to be DX, DT, plus X is our units and week is our time. Okay, and this is a rate, so it's a derivative. So we have dp dt is going to be equal to dx dt times dp dx because the dx terms cancel when I multiply, and I'm left with dp dt. So now we have these two number values, so we just plug them in, this one here and that one there. We multiply, we get 300. And now DP represents profit, so this is money, and then DT represents time, so per week. And that is part C. Part D wants us to find each open interval on which the profit is decreasing. So when we find when the profit is decreasing, we're going to deal with the derivative of the profit function. And earlier we said that p prime of x was equal to negative 2x over 25 plus 80. So we are going to set that equal to 0 to find the critical values. So we say negative 2x over 25 plus 80 equals 0. So... 80 equals 2x over 25. So x is going to be 80 times 25 over 2. And this cancels and becomes 40. So x equals 1,000. But then it wants to know when it's decreasing from 0 to 9,000. And we have 1,000 as a critical number. So when we plug in 1 into this function, we're going to get a positive number. And we plug in 2,000, we're going to get a negative number. So it's decreasing from 1,000 to 9,000. So for part D, they want us to know when the profit is decreasing, in which time interval. So we deal with the derivative of the profit. And we set it equal to 0 here. And we solve for x. And we get x equals 1,000 is our critical number. We set up a number line and we plug values less than 1,000 and more than 1,000 into the derivative function. And you get a positive number here and negative here. So it's decreasing from 
1,000 to 9,000. Okay, and now we'll do part E. So for part E, it says for this cost function here, find the average cost function. So they want to go average cost, which is C bar X, and that is going to equal your cost function divided by X. So we take every term in our cost function and divide by X. So we have 3X squared over 100, so this is the average cost plus 10x plus 100, all over x, <clears throat> so c bar of x. There's one term in my denominator, so I can split it up to each. So I get 3x over 100, plus 10, so x is cancel, 1 cancels there, plus 100 over x. Okay. So that's your average cost. So remember, the average cost is your cost function divided by x, so I take my cost function and I divide every term by x. I can split the x up to each three terms because there's only one on the denominator. So I get my average cost function. Now there's one more part. So they want to know your marginal average cost when x is 100. Remember I said before that marginal anything is going to be the derivative. So you're going to find c prime of your average cost. So we're finding the derivative of this function. So prime of x, this will equal marginal. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be 3 over 100. Your middle term will cancel out, and then you get minus 100 over x squared. Okay. And they want to know when x equals 100. So we plug in 100, so 3 over 100 minus 100 over 100 times 100. So one of them goes away. I have 3 over 100 minus 1 over 100. That's going to be 2 over 100, which is 0 0.02. And then they want us to interpret our result. So we say that the average cost is increasing because it's a positive number. So average cost is increasing by 2 cents per unit. And that's how you would interpret it. Okay. So for number two, they say, what is the marginal average cost when x equals 100? To find the marginal, you're going to take the derivative of the average cost function. And that's going to be 3 over 100 minus 100 over x squared using power rule. And then we're going to plug in x equals a 100. And we get 2 over 100, which is 0 0.02. And then because it's positive, the average cost is increasing by 2 cents per unit. So this is number 2, parts A through E.